Hey everyone, thanks for checking in. We're going to take a look at the Norma Monolithic. Sounds pretty intimidating, doesn't it? 108 grain, 9 millimeter. That's an odd weight. It's not necessarily light for caliber because you certainly have 115 grain bullets out there, but it's an odd weight. This is not a traditional lead jacketed cup and core bullet. This is a copper bullet. And you have expanding and non-expanding copper bullets. This is supposed to be an expanding copper bullet. At least we hope that happens with the protocol to which we are going to subject it. I think the one element of science and technology that really geeks people out over expanding copper bullets is typically reliable expansion and tremendous expansion at that relative to anything else in its class for 9mm or other calibers for that matter. So we're going to give that a run. Chronograph velocities, uh, this supposedly has a high velocity. We're going to confirm that or not. That's certainly an important element of making this bullet work. So this is really a big question mark as to what's going to happen here. Norma is a Swedish company, but the packaging indicates this product was manufactured in Hungary. I purchased this ammo online via the Norma site. I'm not finding it listed so much on distributor sites or on the retail shelf. Although velocity is over 1300 feet per second, it is not marked or promoted as plus P or even plus P plus. I noticed this was a long cartridge, which could present a feeding issue with some handguns. I've compared it here to a couple of premium brands that are among my preferred EDC options. Copper bullets by mass will weigh less than lead, so appearances with regard to how much space or area they occupy can be misleading. As for the bullet, my first impression was that it was spray painted because quality control on this aspect, in my opinion, conveys a, a cheap appearance. Norma does not mention if this is a low flash powder, but from my limited night shooting with it, I'll say that it's moderate. Advertised Velocity sells ammo, and Norma is making every effort to do so here by noting Velocity on the top and three sides of the packaging. The first check is from a barrel length that most people are not carrying, other than law enforcement, and this is not law enforcement ammo. The average of 1215 is 93% of advertised. From a 4-inch barrel, we continue to drop, obviously, but we did absorb the largest amount of velocity depreciation at the outset. The average of 1170 is 89% of advertised down to an approximately 3-inch barrel, which is very common these days. Muzzle energy is just above 300 foot-pounds, which is getting close to the high end of 38 Special Plus P and 380 territory using premium ammo. The average of 1131 is 86% of advertised. On the fourth side of the packaging that does not advertise velocity or muzzle energy, notice the small print. This was tested from a 6-inch barrel. Ready for block shots, we're going to have five shots from the Glock 19 from 10 feet. This block a little different when I've used the past couple of tests. It's a little shorter. It cracked when I was taking it out of the mold. And uh, I'm going to keep it. We're going to work with it because it is 14 and a quarter inches in length. That should be more than enough for this ammo. That's the first reason why. The second reason why is it calibrated. So I didn't want to waste it. And we are running currently. Come in there. Uh, get the focus. Just about... Coming in about 39 degrees, that's where this block needs to be. So literally in the next 90 seconds, we're going to let this thing fly. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Denim. Four layers of 16-ounce denim. I'm going to give it quite a test. This is an IWBA testing protocol. Let's take our shots and see what happens here. Quick preliminary, and I'll preface it by saying I have seen far worse. I've seen better. We did capture three. That's good news. The two that passed through bounced off the board. They did not go through. One landed behind it, and the other on the floor in front of the table. Both are plugged with denim. Here's a close-up for you. With regard to the three that are in the block, I'm going to say initially they are at eight, nine, and anywhere from 12 and three quarters to 13 inches. Little bit of radiology for you. Get your money's worth here. We have the point of entry here on the left, 
all of them you can see kind of grouped in pretty tight but it gave them room to expand obviously so nothing really bumped into each other that's a good thing but these really didn't get to their full expansion point till about two and a half three inches in but this disruption that's just one shot there that's that's pretty big this is gel so it is what it is and then this continues on for about seven or eight inches then we have the first one least penetration is coming in uh, we'll have that measurement just over eight inches the other one's kind of here cloudy in the background it's uh, about an inch further out and then finally way out here very cloudy in the background this one's coming in just over 13 inches prior to compiling this review i watched pretty much all the online tests for this ammo if i recall correctly the majority used clear gel and did not include any type of clothing penetration depths in those reviews was reasonably consistent with the expanded shots we had here I strongly believe that multiple layers of and or heavy clothing will create a challenge for this ammo. Plus, the relatively low momentum factor compared to most 9mm ammo, which was achieved here by the lower weight combined with reduced velocity. I do suspect the deepest penetrating bullet that stayed in the block likely followed a previous channel as those lanes measured just over an inch. Regardless, this ammo is not likely to surpass 9 or 10 inches in the real world and possibly much less when encountering bone. And that is something we have to consider. Self-defense ammo that isn't necessarily barrier blind, but can overcome the real life obstacles we are most likely to face in the moment that we strive our entire lives to avoid. The expansion factor of this product is obviously impressive, but the monolithic is a bit underwhelming in other areas that, for my personal EDC criteria, carry a higher value proposition. Everyone's criteria is different, and that is our choice. Thanks for watching.